just want to say good evening and thank you for being here. Uh, my, my, my primary goal tonight is not to bore you. Uh, Yay. Talk the mechanics of the financial system. I'm not sure how many, how many people um, uh, heard today's topic and kind of went, oh my God. But I wanted to pass these out, these two slides while I'm talking because I want you to look at these. Um, these two slides here, this is, uh, this is really good, a really good set of graphs. The first one here is, and it, it's not directly on subject, that's why I'm going to pass them around and let you look at them. Uh, the first one, and it, it basically shows the, uh, uh, the level of GDP increase or decrease uh, as chartered against government spending. And it kind of puts, if it, if it didn't already, if, if, there, if it wasn't already completely false, simply by observation. Here's the data that shows that Keynesian economics has absolutely no impact on um, the growth or, um, or slowdown of an economy. Because if you look at the distribution chart behind it, you can see that none of the money that was spent, just like this chart here, has any relation on changing the growth of the economy. It's distributed all over the entire curve. But anyway, my name is Jeff White. I, um, uh, when Dr. Prentice first proposed this group, I was extremely, uh, four or five years ago now, I was extremely excited because um, I've been trying to uh, get this message out for a long, long time. And I've been studying Austrian economics for about uh, somewhere over 15, 18 years. I'm not sure exactly what now. But um, um, the way I came across Austrian economics is a pretty circuitous path. And it's one of the things that prompted me to follow a particular direction in my career. I was, uh, for almost 15 years, I was a chief consulting engineer to Bell Laboratories in Murray Hill in Homedale, New Jersey. Uh, well, I worked out of Colorado and I spent a lot of time flying back and forth. I didn't, um, <clears throat> after I did my first big bank, which was Bank of America, in designing and implementing their, enterpri their enterprise-wide uh, global network, uh, I found that I was highly interested in understanding the things that I did not understand about how the financial system worked. And the more I got into banking, the more I got into financial systems, the more I realized that things were not as they appear to most people. Um, and primarily, and I set off on my search to discover where the magic bit machine was, where all the money flows out of magically out of thin air. And the more I tracked back, and the more I got to uh, look into each one of the different financial entities I worked, I've worked for, I've, I've designed and implemented uh, global networks for Citigroup, Merrill Lynch, Manufacturers Hanover, Chase Manhattan, MasterCard. Um, <coughs> I've had interface and, and worked with the World Bank and the IMF from um, the standpoint of uh, interfacing networks from uh, other places in the banking system to those entities. Um, <clears throat> I've also done work with all of them, with many, many, many of the money center banks, not all of them, but many of the money center banks, which I'll talk about uh, what a money center bank is. Um, in working with the Federal Reserve System and Fedwire, I was the chief consulting engineer for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation bailout network that, uh, that uh, built the capability for the FDIC to take over uh, the RTC, which took over the FSLIC uh, back in the 80s. And so consequently, I learned a lot of things. And that's some of what I'm going to try and impart tonight. I think it's very important that Americans understand to a certain degree what the, um, the, the true nature of the banking system, the true nature of money is, because it is, it is frankly my opinion that we are headed into the most devastating economic cycle to be seen in more than a century. And I don't say that lightly, believe me. I'm not here to panic people, I'm not here to depress people. But I, but I do believe that people need to start understanding the truth that is being withheld from them, um, or simply that because of, um, this system is not easy to understand in some ways. It's very simple in, some, in, in certain ways, it's very difficult to understand in other ways. So my purpose is, and I hope more of this type of, of information gets out into the public, is to get people to understand why exactly we are heading into 
one of the worst economic periods that have been seen in a century. But the nature of this talk is, is the mechanics of the banking financial crisis, a collapsing infrastructure, and how it may impact future and monetary system, future financial uh, and monetary systems. Okay. So I hope by the time we get through the end of this, you'll have at least at the highest level, because I'm going to obviously condense a lot of information into the basic functional pieces about what the global financial system and banking looks like. But before I get started, one of the things I wanted to do is I want to show everybody this picture here. This is who I'm doing this for, okay? This lady right here is Nancy Nguyen Go. She was one of my she was one of my chief systems engineers. She died on the 97th floor of the South Tower on 9/11, working on one of our contracts for Marsh McLennan, which is a derivatives which is a derivatives trading trading firm. Um, at the time that 9/11 occurred, I had been trying to significantly reduce uh, my contracts in New York. I was sick and fed up by 2000 with the financial system. What was going on? It was very apparent to me that, in short order, it was going to begin its blow up. That's why I left New York. Unfortunately, in winding down my contracts, I still had three contracts left at the time. Uh, Marsh McLennan was one of them. Nancy was the head engineer, the chief engineer on Marsh McLennan. She was on the 97th floor of, South, of the South Tower on 9/11. And I do this, I do this for Nancy because I believe it's extremely important that the Americans understand why that event occurred and why it should never happen again and what has to be done in the financial system in order to, that it doesn't happen. Okay, talk about the, the first to talk about the mechanics. First, right, how many people in here work in the financial or banking system? Anybody? Uh, for five years? Okay, three years, two years. Okay, so this is, I think this for most people will be, even though in some sense it's kind of rudimentary, it be, should be um, fairly informative. The first thing you have to understand is, is, is the basic architecture of all financial based transactions and banking systems. They basically all have three components. I don't care whether it's a credit card system, um, uh, bank ATM system, a loan system, I don't care what it is, they all have three, it's called, it's called the exchanger uh, architecture. And there's variations on this, but essentially they all amount to the same thing. On one side of any transaction, okay, you have what's known as an acceptor. On the other side of the transaction, you have an issuer. And in the middle, you have the exchanger. Okay? For example, if this was a credit card transaction, you're out here on a merchant terminal somewhere, and the merchant, and the merchant runs your, slips your card through the POS, what happens? Well, it has to go from that, to, from that system, it goes to a switching system that determines who the acceptor is and it sends it for that card, which is owned, which is whoever provided the PON, the point of sale terminal. And that acceptor then accepts the transaction for processing. And of course, doing that, <coughs> it communicates that transaction with the exchanger, um, which in this case, if it's MasterCard, it's the MasterCard Bank and Global Bank Net System. One of the, um, one of the networks that I built for MasterCard was what's called the Transport Program Service Offering. This is a basic architectural view, and it shows some of the components that we designed into that network to rebuild their global MasterCard system. So every time you swap, you swipe your MasterCard, it goes through this system. When the exchanger accepts the transaction, then he locates the issuing bank for that card. Okay, the issuer is the bank you got the card from. At the time that um, At the time that, the, that it's transferred, what this guy does here, the exchanger, um, what, they, what they do is they make sure that the card's good. They check immediately and they're talking to um, the issuer, every one of these guys. They have a MasterCard 